put this on. Hello, excuse me, Alex, everybody ready in the council chambers there? Yes. Great, Kim, you ready to rock on your end? I am ready. Fantastic. Okay, let's, uh, let's go on the record. Uh, now is the time for episode five of the Churchill Creek Project uh, conditional use hearing for the property located at 1310 Beulah Road. The applicant proposes to construct a distribution center at the former George Westinghouse Research and Technology Park. Uh, this tonight's hearing has been set by Borough Council to hear the party objectors who are not represented uh, by legal counsel. And a list of those individuals uh, was posted, I believe, uh, after the last meeting, which was Monday night, that was posted on Tuesday or, or thereabouts. And uh, we did discuss just going in alphabetical order uh, through those party objectors. Now, uh, the borough manager has received correspondence from uh, multiple individuals uh, requesting that their uh, presentations be delayed to a future date. Uh, so uh, in order to address that, that, that's not a decision to be clear that Mr. Gaziani or, or I can make. Uh, so that's something that we'll need to have borough council uh, listen to. And uh, most likely we'll need to have a brief executive session to discuss that request uh, by these individuals if they are still seeking uh, to delay their presentations uh, as to whether or not to grant that request or not. So with that said, um, if we could have uh, those individuals or who, who seek to address council regarding postponement of their presentations from this evening, uh, please raise your hand. Uh, Mr. Gaziani will uh, recognize you and uh, you can make your case to council as to why you feel uh, you need to delay your presentation. Alex, you want to just handle this in order of, of uh, hands? So Peter Spurdy's, Peter, I think you had articulated it uh, first in a letter comprehensively to me. Why don't you go ahead um, and address council. Go ahead and unmute yourself and speak. If you would like, uh, you could turn your camera as well. You're addressing me, I presume? Yes, Peter, since you, you were one of the individuals who had asked that we delay having the public objector comment this evening or party objector comment this evening take place. Well, um, so the first reason is that the, uh, the Monday uh, report on the um, uh, air pollution involved a, um, a document that had been posted, I think, just a day or two prior to the um, <clears throat> prior to the meeting. So it was not something that we were familiar with at the time, or that we had an opportunity to really look at. And since it's a somewhat lengthy document, and since it's somewhat significantly different than the prior report, uh, I feel that I would need more time to go through that and really examine it as closely as I would like. Uh, Mr. Spurdies, yeah. Mr. Spurdies, I apologize for uh, interrupting. We're getting a lot of feedback or, or there's some, a lot of noise coming from your, from uh, your microphone. I'm sorry, hang on one second. It's my dog. Uh, Thanks. Uh, uh, do you want to say that again or did you hear that? I think the court reporter may have missed the, at least the last uh, portion. So if you could just repeat that part, thank you. Yes, uh, I, I did not feel that uh, given the uh, fact that it was substantially changed from the earlier report and that it was uh, <clears throat> posted um, just a, a day or two prior to the uh, Monday meeting that I had not had enough time for me to uh, 
examine it in the kind of detail that I would like. Um, and the second is just sort of the general point that um, it wasn't until uh, Monday that I realized that I may have to uh, speak as soon as Thursday. And uh, just in general, uh, I need more time in order to uh, prepare uh, <clears throat> the remarks that I would like to make. Okay, thank you, Mr. Spurdies. Um, you know, I, I will well, tell you, we'll, we'll take that under advisement. Is there anyone else you'd like to address council to, to make the same or similar request? Uh, I, I, I should, could I add one thing? I, sure. I think form that the internet on Holland Road is out. Um, have you received that information? Alex, you're muted right now. Thanks, Gavin. A text was sent to me earlier about Holland Road and internet. Um, that's really not for discussion right now because I can't verify or not verify that. But I do know that, Gavin, at the beginning, you asked for participants to raise their hand if they were not prepared to speak this evening. And besides Mr. Spurdy's, uh, nine others have raised their hands. And I can go in order of those. But I think it's, it's generally along the same line. Um, if it's fair to say that's what's being presented, is that there was not enough time for them to have notice at the end of the hearing on Monday and, the, and to today to be able to be prepared. So I think they're asking for the council's indulgence to consider this request to, to allow those to speak tonight who may be prepared and for those who are not prepared to uh, speak on August 24th. Okay, thanks, Alex. And let's, let's go ahead and we'll, we'll make that assumption, but if there's, it, so, so those folks who have uh, registered with the borough, that, that concern and that request, um, if that is your, if you have the same basis for making that request, uh, you can put your hands down. If there's someone who, who would like to, ha has another uh, position they'd like to put forth or another argument they'd like to make, we can still hear that before we go into executive session. So again, if you could put your hands down, if you're, uh, in line with Mr. Spurdy's, Spurdy's request uh, for that for that same reason to delay. If there's another uh, some other reason you'd like to address council before they go into executive session, uh, please raise your hand. So both Ralph and Christopher have their hands raised still as participants. Go ahead, Christopher. Uh, thanks. Uh, it, it, along the same lines of what uh, Peter Spiriti said, but you know, I think a lot of us uh, have been really, really understanding of the fact that we have to have Zoom meetings. Um, and a lot of us have families, obligations, things have come up. We spent five hours on Monday, uh, 10 hours the week before. I don't know how many hours the week before. Um, all we're asking for is a small continuance to the 24th uh, so that we may have time to get ourselves prepared, not only uh, for this, but for our lives. Many of us are not professional uh, zoning board members or hearing members, just like yourself. So uh, that's what I asked for this continuance for. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. McMullen. Uh, so Mr. do we have Mr. Waller is the other, I'm seeing more hands raised now. Again, if, if your rationale is that you need more time to prepare, we've heard that and the council will consider that. If you have some other rationale you'd like council to consider, we will hear that separately, uh, but you don't need to raise your hand if your reason is you need more time to prepare. So I see Sandy and Mark both have their hands up. So Mark, you wanna go ahead then? Sure. Uh, I just wanna emphasize from a process standpoint that maybe can be improved going forward. Uh, part of the issue here is, um, is, uh, is lack of uh, visibility into the process. Said a different way, you know, it wasn't until Monday that we learned the next meeting would be on Thursday. So that adds to the uh, to the uh, uh, dilemma, so to speak. We had no idea there would when the next meeting would be. So if we get more visibility out beyond uh, when the next meeting is, that may help going forward. Thanks, Mr. McDonald. So you need more time to prepare, is what you're saying? Yes. Thanks. Understood. Uh, Ms. Fox, do you have a different reason besides needing more time to prepare? 
Um, well, in addition to that, I, I certainly, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yes. I certainly wanted to review the, um, the final air quality report since I will be focusing on air quality uh, to make sure I didn't miss anything critical in my testimony. But in addition to that, I had sent an email to Alex asking if, uh, if Ruthie uh, Ray could go after me and then Ruthie is calling an expert witness and then there is another witness after that person were, were wanting to testify sequentially. And uh, Ruthie is now on vacation and out of state. So uh, today would have been very difficult to do that. So I want to be able to do that sequentially. So we ask for the next date when she will be back from, from out of state. Thank you, Ms. Fox. Okay, uh, Alex, I don't see any other hands up. Um, uh, as you and I discussed uh, prior to the hearing, I think the easiest thing to do would be just to mute the uh, uh, mute the, the council chambers. There, I will uh, I will call into uh, the council president's phone um, other members of council who are not uh, present in the council chambers. If you could just call uh, one of those individuals, so there can be a, a speaker phone set up. Uh, we'll discuss this matter. Uh, temporarily recess into executive session and we'll, we'll, we'll move as quickly as we can to get back and reopen the uh, hearing. So thanks everybody in advance for your patience. So, yeah, so do not disconnect from the Zoom meeting. You'll, you, you'll, you, we're still keeping this meeting on, but we're just muting what we're discussing.
All right, Cam, are you ready for us to go back on the record? I am, Gavin. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, back on the record. Uh, Council has reviewed the request uh, by uh, the various party objectors to uh, postpone their uh, presentations until August 24th. Um, Council is agreeable to granting that postponement in this, in this one instance. So any of those individuals who feel like they uh, cannot proceed tonight uh, due to uh, not having enough time to prepare uh, are, are welcome to delay their presentations to the 24th. Now, keeping in mind that uh, the next likely date after the 24th will be the 26th, which has been reserved for uh, Attorney Ferguson to present his expert witnesses, so that uh, if we cannot complete the party of the various uh, party objector cases who are delaying from tonight until the 24th, we will have to select a new date, uh, most likely in September, to complete the party objector uh, testimony. Uh, with that said, uh, we do we are all together here tonight. Um, you know, these are not easy hearings to arrange. And uh, if there are party objectors who are prepared and willing to provide their, uh, pr uh, present their cases, uh, any witnesses or just their own testimony, whatever they plan to present, uh, council uh, is ready to hear those party objectors this evening. So if you could, uh, you know, raise your hand, let uh, Mr. Graziani know uh, that you are prepared to move forward with your case and uh, we can proceed with uh, whoever's ready to go for tonight. Mr. Rob, I'm going to go ahead and, sorry about that. And again, to be clear, uh, any parties who do not wish to go tonight uh, can delay until the 24th, uh, but those who are uh, ready and able to, to go tonight, are we, we would appreciate it if they would. Ray, you want to begin, please, Ray? Ah, sorry, my Zoom reset when I click that. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I'm Raymond Delask from 33 Churchill Road. And just a brief explanation of my expertise. Um, I've been in the Navy for over 20 years, and my current position is providing regulatory oversight for the Navy and the Department of Energy. And my assignment, uh, I've had many assignments in this position since 2012. My position requires the review of technical proposals, procedures, and design developed and reviewed by engineers of various backgrounds and certifications, which are presented to the government for review, concurrence, endorsement, or approval. That being said, my testimony tonight is my own, and I do not speak for or represent the positions of the United States Navy, the Department of Energy, or any other government entity in this matter. My testimony is concerning the adequacy of the traffic and sound studies. The borough requires that for conditional use, the to be approved, the proposal, the proposal <clears throat> shall not involve any element or cause any condition that may be dangerous, injurious, or noxious to any other property or persons, and shall comply with the performance standards of 304 TAC 23, which states any use which consists, it constitutes a public nuisance or which does not comply with the requirements of the section is prohibited. And my position is that the traffic study and sound study do not adequately meet those requirements, specifically because the, uh, and discussed in previous testimony, the traffic study did not include the evaluation of current traffic patterns regarding backups on I-376, which caused major congestion and traffic to divert through the borough and therefore it did not uh, evaluate the potential impact of on the residents of increasing truck traffic that is diverted due to congestion on I-376. And as a result of this uh, not being evaluated in the traffic study, the sound study also did not evaluate the impact of truck traffic going through the borough, which was also previously testified by the sound study engineer.
Now, there were many statements made in previous testimony and previous planning commission meetings stating that truck traffic would not go through the borough um, and it would go to 376, mainly because of the close proximity. However, in those discussions, there was no evaluation of the congestion on 376 and how that would impact the shortest routes or what's easiest for the trucks, which was commented on numerous times. So without that evaluation, there's been no technical justification or verifiable evidence uh, to prove that statement or those statements that truck traffic will not travel through the borough. And in addition, um, some comments regarding the impact of uh, truck traffic and truck noise uh, in previous testimony stated uh, when specifically referring to uh, sensitivity to sound that uh, if a motorcycle wakes you up, then these trucks will be uh, more comparable to that. And there, are, and there are things that you can do on your end to mitigate. Um, which I find to be a, a concerning statement that shows from the sound engineer that he believes that there is a potential uh, nuisance impact to residents from truck traffic. Um, and the fact that the position and presentation uh, directed that towards a residence problem to resolve, uh, that does not seem to be an appropriate um, position on that, since at this point, it is not the resident's duty to mitigate the impact from the, the nuisances, noise, sound, or any other things from this site. It's the responsibility of the developers to mitigate that prior to movement. So the residents of Churchill didn't move to a community that had a distribution center. They did not have a light, heavy commercial or even industrial facility in their neighborhood. They had a residential community with a decommissioned or out of use uh, laboratory. So based on those things, I do not believe that the sound study or traffic study adequately uh, met the requirements of the ordinance uh, 304 TAC 31 and 304 TAC 23. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Delask. Alex, who's up next? You're muted. Is this witness to be ex cross examined at all, or is there oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I apologize. Yes, absolutely. Um, we'll uh, we'll give the applicant the first opportunity to uh, cross examine, and then all the uh, Mr. Fer Mr. Ferguson will go next, and then uh, the other party objectors will have an opportunity to cross examine. Thank you, Alex. If I may, um, with regard to these witnesses, I think you can assume that I will not cross examine unless I raise my hand. Thank you, Mr. Ferguson. Sure. Mr. Gallagher, Mr. Metz, any questions? If you're speaking, Mr. Gallagher, you are muted. You remain muted. Can you hear us now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Delask, are you a uh, certified traffic engineer? No, I am not. We have no further questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gallagher. Uh, are there any other uh, party objectors who have questions for Mr. Delask? Kevin? Yes. Do you want to swear in anyone tonight that hasn't been previously sworn in? Sure, we can do that. I mean, I, I think we do have the, well, just in case, I think that's a good idea, Kim. So why don't you go ahead and do that? Thank you. Okay. All right. If anyone 
is here tonight that hasn't been sworn in. If you could raise your right hand, please. And if you gave any pr prior testimony and you weren't sworn in, go ahead and raise your hand. Do you swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Thank you. Thanks, Kim. Um, Alex, any other uh, party objectors that we're able to identify who may have questions? April Klein has requested to speak this evening. Uh, for Mr. DeLask? No, she's just requested to speak. I'm sorry, I thought we already asked that question. No, that's all right. Um, yeah, I, I, I did not, uh, we do not see any other additional uh, questions from Mr. DeLast. We can go ahead and, and move to the next, uh, the next party objector. And that would be April. Okay. Is Ms. Klein prepared to proceed tonight? I am. Thank you, Gavin. Thank you. Uh, my, name is, my name is April Klein, and I live at 18 Holland Road. My family has lived in Churchill Borough for 39 years. We've lived in the borough during the Westinghouse era and all through the sub subsequent owners of the former research park at 1310 Beulah Road. Our property line is approximately 750 feet east of the site. Our current view of the site is of a tree-covered hillside. We enjoy a dark sky at night and the quiet beauty of our immediate neighborhood. My comments tonight will be restricted to the general conditional use criteria as described in the Borough Code and the requirements for redevelopment projects as outlined in the Implementable Comprehensive Plan for Churchill, Borough, Monroeville, and Wilkins Township. My personal objections will be reserved for the public comment section of the public hearing. Um, for the, the criteria for approval in the Zoning Code, Section 30431 uh, states, a conditional use shall be approved if and only if it is found to meet the following criteria listed in sections A through H. I would like to review sections C, E, G, and H. In section C, the, the zoning code states, the proposed use shall not involve any element or cause any condition that may be dangerous, injurious, or noxious to any other property or persons and shall comply with the performance standards of section 304-23. My response to this is that the conditional use criteria for this section of the zoning code has not been met. The latest version of the traffic impact study conducted by the applicant's engineers and approved by the Churchill Planning Commission on July 14th does not sufficiently remediate all, quote, elements that are dangerous, potentially injurious, and or noxious to the property of residents and persons living in the borough. For example, the proposed driveway B exit from the site directs truck, truck traffic and commuter traffic onto Greensburg Pike. This will impact the health and safety of residents whose homes are situated along this route and the children attend, attending the Pace School and the Woodland Hills High School across from this exit. According to the traffic impact study, approximately 60% of the truck traffic leaving the site is expected to use driveway B exit. These trucks will travel north on Greensburg Pike, bear right onto Grand Boulevard, turn right onto William Penn Highway, and finally turn right onto the entrance ramp for I-376 West. This designated truck route passes by approximately 50 residences that are located along the route from site driveway B to the I-376 westbound entrance ramp. This is a potentially, quote, dangerous and noxious condition for residents living in these homes. The applicant's air quality study was limited in scope to the geographical area included in the traffic impact study it did not, and, and did not include the entire borough or surrounding communities. The air quality study suggests that the increased air pollution generated will have a nominal effect on area residents overall. While that may be true, the residents living along the proposed truck route 
will have to endure not only increased traffic, but direct exposure to diesel fumes from trucks that will be idling at the intersections along the road and along the street in front of their homes during rush hour and traffic delays. The potential of truck stacking along Greensburg Pike and Graham Boulevard has not been adequately, adequately addressed in the traffic impact study. It's important to note that the applicant's air quality expert witness has testified that the air quality study was commissioned and paid for by the firm that was hired by the applicant to conduct the traffic impact study and the subsequent air quality study. The scope of these two studies was determined by the, engineer, by the engineering firm hired by the applicant. Uh, you can refer to the American Lung Association for additional information on the effects of breathing in diesel fumes on children and adults. Their website is www.lung.org slash clean air slash outdoors. Also, the proposed road diet for Greensburg Pike will prevent homeowners from parking in front of their residences. This could be considered injurious to the homeowners living along the proposed truck route. It takes away a former convenience that residents now enjoy and one that they expected to retain when they purchased their homes. The traffic impact study requires the relocation of the Beulah Road, Churchill Road intersection to approximately 80 feet south from its current location. This relocation will permit additional capacity or storage length for trucks that exit the site driveway A on Beulah Road and turn left northbound onto Beulah Road. Now, I would like to uh, make a note that the preferred truck route to I-370 east, eastbound that was um, identified in the traffic impact study is for trucks to exit the site via driveway A turn north on Beulah Road, merge over to the right lane as it passes under the I-376 overpass, and then turn right at the William Penn Highway intersection onto I-376 East. Some of our residents, including myself, question if the preferred truck routes are enforceable. We question how the applicant plans to prevent trucks exiting site driveway A from driving directly east onto Churchill Road and then entering I-376 eastbound at the Holland Road on-ramp. Our excellent borough police force does not at present have adequate staffing to constantly monitor truck, truck traffic exiting the site. Relocating the intersection also requires the destruction of the Churchill Commons Garden, which is now located on borough-owned land. As an active member of the Churchill Garden Club, I question how the applicant obtained the right to use this public parcel of land for a new intersection. The destruction of the Churchill Commons Garden is, I would consider, injurious to members of the Churchill Garden Club and to residents who enjoy this green space. My objection is that a private developer is obtaining publicly owned land for their own benefit. If this should occur, the garden club should be compensated for the thousands of dollars they have spent on this community garden. Moving on to section E. Uh, the zoning ordinance set cites the proposed use shall produce a total visual impression and environment which is consistent with the environment of the neighborhood. My objection centers on the verbiage quote, consistent with the environment of the neighborhood. During the applicant's presentations, residents were shown drawings of the proposed distribution center and photographs of other similar facilities. We were told, quote, this is what the distribution center could look like. The proposed building is huge, approximately 100 feet tall and 634,000 feet square feet in size. A single building of this size and scale is, quote, not consistent with the environment of our neighborhood. On the main page of the Churchill Borough website, there is an in introduction to the borough titled, Welcome to Churchill Borough. The website states that Churchill is a residential community 
and offers welcoming neighborhoods, wooded hills, and a rich history dating back to 1773. Removing 1,400 trees from the site and creating a giant plateau held up by 50-foot-high retaining walls is, quote, not consistent with the environment of our current neighborhood. If you scroll down through the main page of the Churchill Borough website, there are four articles that stand out in opposition to this project. One, Churchill Borough Community Vision for the Future. Two, Green Space, the ever important role. Three, the, it's tree time presentation. Four, Borough Tree Canopy importance, importance Elevated. The applicant's proposed use for the property at 1310 Beulah Road does not conform to the borough's community vision for mixed use of redevelopment sites. The applicant's proposed use for the site destroys green space, requires the removal of 1,400 mature trees, and exacerbates the tree canopy loss. As such, the applicant's proposed use for the site violates the criteria listed in Article 5, Section E of Section 304-31 of the Zoning Code. Moving on to Section G, the proposed site shall promote the objectives of this chapter and shall be consistent with the comprehensive plan. The implementable, implementable comprehensive plan for Churchill Borough, Monroeville, and Wilkins Township is posted on the borough website. In Section 6-2, this section covers redevelopment objectives for these three communities. It contains a discussion of campus office parks and the trend towards businesses relocating their office complexes into dense urban areas. This trend has been halted since the COVID-19 epidemic changed the way many Americans work. Various options were cited in the comprehensive plan for redevelopment of mostly vacant office parks. None, none of these suggestions included a huge truck service distribution center. Section 623 of the Comprehensive Plan outlines redevelopment strategies for Churchill Borough. One of the strategies in the Comprehensive Plan was for communities to update their zoning ordinances to allow for mixed-use development, particularly at former office parks and other large sites. The applicant's current plans for 1310 Beulah Road is not a mixed-use development. Another strategy is that Churchill would update the zoning ordinance to include environmental sustainability as a priority for redevelopment sites. The comprehensive plan calls for redevelopment projects to provide open space and perimeter walkways green infrastructure best management practices for stormwater management, parking lots designed to minimize impervious surfaces, dark sky lighting, and the limited use of curbs along driving lanes and parking lots and other, quote, green practices. First, the applicant's current plan does not contain perimeter walkways with the exception of a possible sidewalk along the proposed new local road that will parallel the parkway east leading from the proposed Greensburg Pike slip ramp into the site, which then will exit onto Beulah Road. Second, a comprehensive review of stormwater management practices will be addressed by another objector. Third, the applicant's design for the parking lot does not specify impervious surfaces or include bioswales to collect and filter stormwater before the water is directed into the underground storage tanks. And fourth, dark sky lighting issues were only partially addressed in the applicant's lighting plan. The illumination of the warehouse building itself will increase light pollution and impact the, quote, dark sky currently enjoyed by homes located near the site. H, section H. The proposed use shall be consistent with past development of the borough and its current character. The applicant's proposed use for this site does not fit the criteria listed in Section 8. Number one, 
Churchill Borough succeeded from Wilkins Township in 1934. Churchill Borough evolved into a residential neighborhood that contained two churches, two golf courses, one service station, and the park-like setting of the Westinghouse campus. Number two, the original Westinghouse campus was an environmentally friendly designed facility. The buildings were oriented to fit into the natural contours of the land, and the entire complex respected the residential character of the surrounding neighborhood. The site plan included extensive landscaping and professionally designed gardens and pathways for the enjoyment of both the Westinghouse employees and the members of the community. For reference, I will, uh, I will cite the Westinghouse landscape brochure from the 1970s. I have a copy of which, which I can share with Borough Council. Number three, the Westinghouse campus functioned primarily as a weekday operation with most employees working the day shift from Monday through Friday. Large truck traffic into and out of the Westinghouse site was minimal. Arrangements were made with the Churchill Borough Police Department for officers to help facilitate traffic flow during peak commuter hours of operation. I remember this. I lived in the borough during this time. Number four, post-Westinghouse owners of the site preserved the green campus-like features of the site. There were various mixed-use tenants, including Siemens, UPMC Diversified Services, and a film studio. None of those businesses posed an adverse environmental effect on the community. Number five, the applicant's plan for the site consists of constructing a huge truck service distribution center. The construction of this facility will destroy the natural topography of the land. The distribution center will be in operation 24-7 and will forever change the residential character of Churchill Borough. Simply stating, the applicant's proposed use for this site is not consistent with past development in the borough or with its current character, and as such, it does not meet the required approval criteria outlined in, outlined in Section 304-31, Section 8. That concludes, concludes my testimony for this evening. Thank you, Ms. Klein. Um, I did want to make a clarification based on a comment you made at the beginning of your testimony. So before I uh, turn you over to any cross-examination questions, uh, and this is, I'm, I'm glad you raised this because there, apparently this, this may be a source of confusion for others as well. Uh, those folks who are party objectors will, will be required to comment during their presentation of their case. There will not be a separate public comment period uh, opportunity for party objectors. And so since you may not have been aware of that, it sounds like you were not aware of that uh, because the other uh, party objectors have been given until the 24th to uh, complete their case or to present their case. If you would like to delay the remainder of your comments until the, the 24th, uh, council will be okay with that. But if you're ready to state them now, you're welcome to do that. Thank you, Gavin. I think I will delay the remainder of my comments. Okay, thanks. We'll make a note of that and make sure we get you in on the 24th or whenever it gets continued to if we don't finish on the 24th. Um, Thank you. Sure. Mr. Gallagher, Mr. Metz, uh, do you have any questions for Ms. Klein? Uh, just a few. Um, Ms. Klein, are you a traffic engineer? I am not. Okay. And have you prepared any kind of traffic analysis uh, or comments for PennDOT to review? Not at this time, no. Okay. I have no further questions. Thank you, Mr. Gallagher. Um, are there any other questions from any other party objectors? Um, I see. I see. Ms. Yankis has her. Okay, her hand is back down. Um, with that said, I think we can. Uh, Alex, no other questions. Any questions from council? I should ask that with the uh, prior uh, witness as well. Alex, can you confirm no questions from council? No questions in this room. Okay, great. Uh, we'll go ahead then and move on to uh, the next witness. Thank you, Ms. Klein. Mr. Rob, I don't have any more hands up. We did earlier in the meeting promote people to the, become panelists, and I'm not sure unless there are other individuals who 
who are registered as a party objector and would like to speak tonight. I don't see anyone else who's you know, raised their hand or asked to speak. So we will give it a minute here since we are all gathered uh, separately, but together uh, to see if there's anyone else who wants to pre present their cases, any other party objectors uh, who have been identified previously in this case, who are prepared to present their testimony and evidence in support of their position this evening. Okay, it sounds like we may have a very busy meeting on the 24th, uh, which is in all likelihood uh, going to carry over until the 20, well, we're going to have Mr. Ferguson on the 26th, so there will be a, uh, a future date to be determined. So, uh, Alex, any, Alex or counsel in that room, any, any open items before we announce the next date, the date and time of the next hearing officially? Well, we've had uh, 95 participants in this form and then on Facebook as well. For those who weren't able to make this evening's meeting, of course, all of these are being recorded and then transcripts are also being posted online. We were able to post the transcript from uh, Mondays from the closed captioning transcription. Uh, so those are there as well. So if you happen to miss these meetings, you can get caught up, watch it on YouTube at twice the speed, if you like. Great. Thank you, Alex. And then we, as we've, uh, we, we've welcomed, again, written comments uh, from those individuals who would prefer to submit testimony in that manner um, and, and still are open to that. And, so. and Gavin, I have a question. I had a, a comment from a resident on that subject. What we were attempting to do is the comments received from July 19th when the hearing began. The borough is not putting up comments that were part of the planning commission deliberation or earlier times. We're just trying to put those really since the hearing began because we invited them to do that. Is, is, is that correct in my understanding? Mr. Yes, Ross? thanks. Thanks for raising that, Mr. Graziani. That, that is correct. So the, the universe we're living in essentially began on July 19th. So that written comments from that day forward uh, will be, be made part of the record for this conditional use proceeding. And the way we're going to do that, uh, I think just from a logistical standpoint is those individuals who are party objectors, and I know this is, uh, can be a little bit taxing on the administration, but I think, Alex, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're gonna set it up so that party objectors will have their last name and then uh, their exhibits will be numbered, uh, you know, Smith one, Smith two. The general public will simply all be kept in a uh, repository under public comments uh, for that will be accessible on the borough website and ultimately made part of the record. Is that correct? Close. That's how we're trying to label them as they go up to the ECO 360. And just for people's, uh, they can search by different topics, traffic, last name or whatever, and the ECO will sort the documents so they're easy to find. I do apologize. It's kind of a lot up there and the naming protocols are less than uniform, which makes it challenging. But since July 19th, the comments that are coming into us are being put up there. Don't expect them. If you send them to me in an afternoon, I'm going to have them up there within a half an hour. It takes us a while to batch them and get them up. So just be patient. Thank you, Alex. Uh, so with that said, uh, there being no other business, Mr. Gallagher, Mr. Metz, Mr. Ferguson, anything from you folks before we announce the next date? Nothing no. further. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so we will recess this hearing once again. Uh, episode six will begin at 6 p.m. on August 24th. Again, we will be uh, hearing from unrepresented party objectors. Uh, ideally, we would you know, get through that entire uh, set of testimony and evidence on the 24th. Um, should we not, the, uh, we have scheduled the 26th for Mr. Ferguson and his expert witnesses uh, and for Mr. Ferguson to put on his case with his clients. And uh, the date after that uh, will, is to be determined. So we'll be working on scheduling that. And as soon as we have that information, We'll provide as much advance notice as possible. Mr. Rob, just one uh, point of clarification. On the 24th, will we be starting alphabetically? Uh, we will We will try to work with the party objectors offline, Mr. Gallagher, to make a determination as to, you, you heard some requests tonight yeah. um, from, from various objectors who may want to go in a certain order. Uh, we want to, you know, we want to try to work with folks to, to make this make the most sense uh, for everybody. So, uh, when we have that information, we will uh, we will provide it. Thank you.
Mr. Rob, one other question. Uh, on, on the 26th, if Mr. Ferguson's case concludes before 11 p.m., can we resume with any remaining other objectors' cases? I think that's a great idea. Uh, so we'll we'll make sure we uh, reinforce that on the 24th, Mr. Metz, uh, so that ideally, you know, we, we don't want to we don't want to waste any uh, any open airspace there. So if Mr. Ferguson finishes up early enough, we will certainly try to uh, move any uh, remaining party objectors into that slot to to before we close out. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, good night, everybody.